In this video, we're going to take a deep dive to understand how chemistry works at a fundamental level. When I first took chemistry in high school, I hated it because I felt like I had to memorize a bunch of facts and I was always terrible at memorizing. But when I took physical chemistry in college, which got into the quantum mechanical basis for chemistry, I fell in love with it because I suddenly now understood the root cause of chemical behavior. This was like a revelation and I've loved quantum physics ever since. I wish I had learned it earlier. So today I want to share in a simplified way, of course, some of what I learned that really helped me understand chemistry. So if you found chemistry difficult, I think you're going to enjoy this video because I think it will give you a much better intuitive feel for it. You'll find that it's all about one thing, electrons, the tiny negatively charged particles around the nucleus of an atom. They're the primary drivers responsible for an atom's behavior in chemical reactions which means they play a key role in the chemical processes that make up our world, including within our own bodies. So what is the underlying reason electrons behave the way that they do? What does this have to do with acids and bases? Stay tuned because that's coming up right now. The key driver of any chemical process is the electron, or more importantly, the way electrons can be configured in atoms. And this configuration is determined by one of the most important equations in quantum physics, the Schrodinger equation, which was developed by physicist Erwin Schrodinger in 1925. It revolutionized our understanding of electrons rather than thinking of them as tiny particles moving in specific orbits around the nucleus. The Schrodinger equation introduced the concept of thinking of electrons as waves. This is where the phrase wave particle duality comes from. It means that electrons can have properties that make them appear as both, though they're really always waves. Now this equation predicts the probability of finding an electron in a certain location around the nucleus rather than in fixed paths. The solution to the Schrodinger equation provides us with atomic orbitals, or regions in the space around the nucleus where the probability of finding an electron is highest. These orbitals form the basis of what we call electron shells and subshells, S, P, D, and F, each with a unique shape and energy level. These subshells are the underlying reason that the periodic table is structured the way that it is. As a rule of thumb, it is grouped by the specific subshell where the outermost electrons are located, also known as the valence shell. For example, alkaline metals such as sodium have their outer electrons in the S orbital, just like other similar atoms such as cesium and potassium, which you'll find below in the same column on the periodic table. Generally speaking, similar atoms are grouped in the same column. This is why elements in the same group behave similarly in chemical reactions. Now going from left to right on any specific row, we're adding an additional electron to the shell structure. The additional electrons fill up lower energy orbitals first, then move to higher orbitals as necessary after the lower ones are filled. When we end up on the far right of the table, we'll find the noble gases, all of which have their outer P shells full. When the shell is full, it makes the atom more stable or more energetically efficient. Since their outermost shell is already full, they are less reactive because they don't have the propensity to take on or give up any of their electrons to share with other elements. Electrons are responsible for chemical bonding and play a fundamental role in interactions between atoms by either sharing electrons as in covalent bonds or transferring them from one atom to another as in ionic bonds, atoms can combine to form molecules and compounds. When atoms interact to form molecules, electrons from the different atoms rearrange themselves to lower the overall energy of the molecule creating a more stable structure. For instance, in ionic bonding, electrons are transferred from one atom to another, creating ions. This transfer results in an electrostatic attraction between positive and negative ions, forming a stable structure, like sodium chloride, NaCl, which you're all familiar with as ordinary table salt. In covalent bonding, electrons are not transferred but shared between atoms, forming bonds that hold molecules together, like the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen in water, H2O, or carbon and oxygen in carbon dioxide, CO2. Okay, that's a lot to digest. You probably need a break, and I need some coffee. 
Actually, I don't drink coffee anymore. I switched to Mud Water, our sponsor today. Coffee was making me a bit too jittery and interfered with my sleep, but Mud Water gives me all day energy without all the bad side effects. Mud Water is a delicious coffee alternative that tastes like cacao and chai had a baby. It's made of some great natural ingredients that all have a purpose. Cacao and chai for a hint of caffeine and hot chocolate flavor, lion's mane for focus, cordyceps to promote natural energy, and chaga and reishi to support a healthy immune system. It's Whole30 approved, 100% USDA certified, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and kosher. It's some good stuff. I like to mix mine with hot oat milk and a little bit of honey using their free frother. And I have to tell you, it's delicious. Mud Water is hooking up all my viewers with a special offer. If you go to mudwater.com slash Ash, you can get a free frother and 15% off. That's M-U-D-W-T-R dot com slash Ash for a free frother and 15% off. That's mudwater.com slash Ash, or just click the link in the description. Okay, I have more energy now. So now I want to introduce a concept to you called electronegativity. This is a measure of the tendency of an atom in a molecule to attract electrons in the system towards itself. When atoms with different electronegativities bond, the shared electrons in the molecule tend to be more attracted to the more electronegative atom. This creates a slightly positive and negative polarity within the molecule because the electron tends to be found more often closer to the more electronegative atom. Now you might ask, what causes higher or lower electronegativity in an atom? It has to do with the way the shells fill up because of quantum mechanics. The optimal configuration is a full outer shell, like I said before, as in the noble elements. But if the element is immediately before that on the periodic table, like the halogens, it will have the most electronegative configuration. This means it badly wants one more electron to make its shell full. So for example, fluorine is the most electronegative element. The bigger atoms below it also want an electron, but not as badly because they are larger atoms. There's less difference in energy between the levels. So a suboptimal configuration for a large atom like chlorine or bromine is less impactful from a potential energy perspective than it is for a smaller atom like fluorine. Their energy states are closer together. So the potential energy difference between the state of adding one electron versus not adding one for bromine is less and thus less reason for it to hunt for a lower energy state versus fluorine. So as you go down the column on the halogen elements, the relative electronegativity decreases. The electronegativity difference among the atoms within a molecule leads to polarity. So for example, in water, H2O, oxygen has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. This leads to the oxygen pulling more electrons towards itself. Consequently, water is a polar molecule, being slightly more negative where the oxygen is located and slightly more positive where the hydrogen is located. Similar polarity like this allows for hydrogen bonding and other intermolecular forces that are essential in biological molecules like DNA and proteins. How does this connect to acids and bases? Well, when the electronegativity difference in a molecule is extreme, for example, in something like hydrochloric acid, the chlorine molecule being highly electronegative effectively strips the hydrogen atom from its lone electron. So when dissolved in water, what we get is a bunch of protons, which are just hydrogen atoms stripped of their electrons, and chloride ions, which are chlorine atoms with an extra electron. An acid is a substance that donates a proton, H+, and a base is a substance that accepts it. So HCl dissolved in water is an acid because it donates a proton to a water molecule, forming hydronium ions, which are just water molecules with an extra proton, creating a positive charge. HCl is the acid and water is the base. When an acid donates a proton, it creates a conjugate base because after donating the proton, it gets set up to gain a proton, while the base that gains the proton becomes a conjugate acid because after gaining a proton, it can donate it. So using the same example of HCl dissolved in water, HCl is the acid, water is the base, but chloride, Cl- is the conjugate base, and H3O plus is the conjugate acid. 
From a quantum mechanical perspective, the tendency of acids like hydrochloric acid to give away or donate their proton is related to the electron density distribution in the molecule and nature of the chemical bond between hydrogen and chlorine atoms. The wave function describing the electron cloud around the H and Cl in HCl shows that the electron density is predominantly located around the chlorine nucleus, leaving the hydrogen atom with a very small electron density, nearly resembling a free proton. Because of this, the hydrogen is easily disassociated as a positively charged proton in an aqueous environment or in the presence of a base that can accept it. This process is also stabilized by the chlorine atom, which has a lone pair of electrons with high electron density, allowing it to exist as a stable chloride ion, Cl- after the H+, or proton, is donated. In very simple terms, the proton has basically just gotten its electron ripped away by the chlorine that really wants to have a full outer shell, as it is more energetically favorable for the chlorine. So the hydrogen is really unnecessary from the point of view of the chlorine. But hydrogen would like its own electrons. But since it can't compete with the chlorine for an electron, it wants to disassociate from HCl acid and attach itself to something else that would better help neutralize its positive charge. In this case, it's the polar water molecule. This is the main principle behind any acid. The proton is displaced and then wants to latch onto something else. So the likelihood of proton donation in acids like HCl is rooted in the quantum mechanical behavior of electrons in the molecule, where the electron clouds asymmetry and the stabilizing effect of the electronegative oxygen atom in water allows the proton to dissociate readily. That's what makes HCl a strong acid. And this proton transfer plays a key role in both industrial and biological processes. In your body, stomach acid, for example, which is mainly hydrochloric acid, helps digest proteins. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, breaks protein bonds, causing them to unfold by disrupting the weak hydrogen bonds that maintain a protein's three-dimensional structure. This essentially unfolds or denatures the protein, exposing the protein's polypeptide chain and makes it more accessible to digestive enzymes like pepsin, which can then cleave the peptide bonds to further break down the protein into smaller amino acid chains, which can be more easily absorbed by your body. In industrial uses, some very strong acids, called superacids because they're stronger than pure sulfuric acid, can donate protons even to very weak bases. For example, the superacid fluoroantimonic acid is so strong that it can even protonate neutral hydrocarbons like methane and ethane substances that usually don't react with most acids. This makes this super acid valuable in the petrochemical industry for upgrading hydrocarbons to higher quality fuels. To summarize, electrons play a key role in chemistry, including that of acids and bases. The orbitals or regions around the nucleus of an atom where the electrons are most likely to be found is determined by the Schrodinger equation. The asymmetry of electron clouds drives proton transfer reactions, which are critical in biological and industrial processes. Electrons are tiny, but their impact is very large, shaping the substances and processes that make up our world and the entire universe. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.